This is The Art of Startup War, and I am your sensei, Brian McMahon. Now, in season one and two, I got inside the minds of startup investors. In season three, I brought in entrepreneurs to share their startup journey. Here, in season four, we combine both so you can hear investors critique the investment value proposition of individual companies. You're going to hear how investors make decisions to invest in startups, what makes a great entrepreneur, and how billion-dollar companies are built. So tune in every Tuesday, 10 a.m., on all the major platforms. You can empower your tribe by sharing the podcast. And remember to subscribe, rate, review, and leave us a comment. Good morning. Welcome back. It's Brian here again. It is the Art of Startup War. Again, we are back with another phenomenal entrepreneur who's going to talk about his journey and why his particular company is going to be one that is going to break through. Now, I happen to know Bradley extremely well from years back in the dojo and a highly respected man here. His company is a really, really interesting company, which even though you're not going to see immediate links to Red Bull, it was the first thing I thought of when he came through the door. I thought, oh my goodness, Turpine Enhanced is the next Red Bull. Um, and I still believe that today. So we're going to talk to Bradley and he's going to tell us a little bit about how the company started, where it came from, where it is right now, and more importantly, where it's going to go to. And for all you investors out there, just keep a listen in for the bits that you like. Welcome. Well, thank you, Brian. It's wonderful to be here again. Again, right? Because we go back. We do. We go back to when you first brought it in. And I, and I remember when you first walked through, normally I have this craving to feel useful for entrepreneurs, right? There's some stuff I'm good at and some stuff I'm not good at. And I like to start with something I'm really good at just so I, I get that self-esteem and I get my self-worth back. And normally my go-to is brand. But then I looked at your brand and I'm like, oh, shit, his brand is really good. <laughs> like, Sorry. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what to do here. You've got really good packaging. The packaging says exactly what you what it does for people. Like it's not it's not focused on, on features or anything else. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm going to have to find something new. Like even on your website, it's just it's just so simple how it's explained, what you do for people. You just make life better for them. Well, well, it has to be simple. Uh, it's never been done before, and uh, people have to get it in a, in a moment's notice walking by. Okay, so tell us about it. Tell us about uh, the... Turpines. Turpine, Turpine Enhanced. Enhanced. So Turpin Enhanced is a corporate name. Our product names are Enheighten, which is a product that enhances people's high going into the cannabis market. Yeah. The other product is called uh, Amplify, which enhances the effects of CBD in the body. So these are derived from terpene oils and plants, and not to bore you with any science. But CBD is like one of the hottest things right now. It's going crazy. CBD is a, a larger market than the THC market. And worldwide, you can ship it across state lines. It's, uh, it's a I, much... I mean, I know the answer for this, but can you Please. explain a little bit why? Why has it become so... Because CBD has been around for a long time. Well, it hasn't been, uh, it hasn't been legal for a long time. No, that's true. So that's been the issue here in the, here in the U.S. Yeah. But and for the medicinal purposes that it's being used for, it's exploded like wildfire. And to your point, way faster than THC. So THC is the part that makes you feel high and all happy and everything. But CBD is the more medicinal part, right? Right. So, so THC has uh, some definite benefits for pain reduction. And actually, a lot of senior citizens, uh, assisted living facilities are getting into the benefits of Giving, uh, giving their patients uh, a little bit of the of THC um, inhalants, mm -hmm. and that helps them get off of some of the prescription painkillers. And you know, the, people don't want to be on prescription painkillers no. for o long opioids periods of time. Opioids is not a fun trip. No, and THC is a, a wonderful stepping stone for people off of opioids and to people uh, to get off of some painkillers that they just maybe don't need. Just uh, you know, for mild uh, pain relief, it can it can be wonderful. Uh, but the primary reason people use THC is for an emotional psychoactive experience. They want the, the emotional feel-good experience. So the Enheightened product that we have enhances that experience for people and helps uh, chronic THC users to feel, uh, to, to reach that feeling good place without needing as much cannabis and to really stay there longer. So uh, we'll step back a little bit. Uh, yeah. Terpene Enhanced, the company name is called Terpene Enhanced. Terpenes, again, not to bore you with any science, but every plant in the world has terpene oils. It's an oil inside the plant. There's about 20,000 different types of terpenes. However, in cannabis and hemp plants, there's about five primary terpene oils that combine with the THC and they combine with the CBD to make them work better. 
like any plant, uh, when, when you go into a pharmaceutical, they extract uh, one compound from a plant and try to really spike that compound in, into very high levels to get the medicinal benefits out of that. What, what people do in the natural supplements world and why a lot of people gravitate to try to find a natural supplement uh, alternative to a pharmaceutical product is because that, that natural product has more compounds than just that one that a pharmaceutical product will extract. And a lot of times they work better together and it's, it's, uh, it, it's, it's easier for the body to process it and you, you really can't overdose on, on, on most natural plants. So uh, we inside of the inside of the uh, cannabis plant and inside of the hemp plant there's uh, you have the THC and you have the CBD but you also have the, the third most prominent compound and most important compound is the terpene oils and right now the, this is a, a huge wave of pharmaceutical research right now we actually had uh, we actually had a PhD that was on our team that had to step off our team because he was now under extremely strict NCNDs from pharmaceutical company taking these terpene oils and turning them into a pharmaceutical drug. So we are on the front of a wave taking this natural, uh, natural terpene oil and we, we put it in a nutritional supplement capsule so that when it's combined with a THC or when it's combined with a CBD, it helps those products work better in the, it helps those constituents work better in the body. So, I mean, two really interesting points. One, people didn't notice this for a long time. I mean, they didn't notice it about the terpenes. They were overlooked that, for a long time, for but a they're long not anymore. time, right? And then suddenly everybody realized it. Um, and then the second point is what I, what I always look for, other than a great entrepreneur and a great founder um, who's going to break through anything, which is yourself, um, but what I always look for is can we get a disruptive technology or implementation which says not too much friction, and I don't mean not too much friction for other people to come in because the actual development of the product is friction itself. I mean not too much friction from the users in that particular space. And the really nice right. thing about terpenes is if I'm in a CBD space and I'm selling CBD, I want it. If I'm in the THC space, I want it. If I'm in just the general space of wanting to have health and wellness, I want it. Like there's not many stakeholders unless I'm missing something that are, are going to fight you against implementing this? No, no. Uh, I was uh, managing director of a licensed uh, cannabis distribution and manufacturing company for the past couple of years, and I've stepped out of that now doing this uh, full-time as we're launching. Essentially, the oils that are being put in vape products and the gels that are the CBD products, whether they're creams or capsules that people are taking, it's a commodity product. Mm. You're making an oil like you're making an engine oil. You're, 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 you're processing, they're processing the plants into an oil. And it doesn't matter what label you put on those products. Essentially, it's, 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 a, CBD, it's a CBD oil. So what we have is a product that helps any of those products work better. So we have an OEM uh, component to our company where we can integrate with a CBD product and supercharge it. Or we can be sort of a side card to that CBD product and they can bundle it together. And so all of these CBD uh, companies, are so much money being flooded into the CBD market. But at the end of the day, you, you got to understand it, it's a commodity. So how are these products going to differentiate themselves? They need so we, to, right? We have an OEM product that helps them stand off the shelf and be the one that works better than all the others. Why? Because it's supercharged with that third component that the, others, uh, that the others don't have. And who do you sell it to? We sell it right now to smoke shops uh, in the California area, and we're working on a distribution deal out of Florida with a company that just uh, recently went public. And so they're going to be able to cover all the smoke shops across the country for us. They go into some cannabis shops. Uh, our TH these are vape shops, right? These are these are these are uh, these are smoke shops, vape vape shops. The distributors uh, will distribute to to all of those the same. I wonder how, the, how are those shops doing. It was I was looked through the window and there's not many yeah. people in there. Is that because they just buy them? The vape they... shops. Yeah, you know the vape shops. I I really don't know how well individually they're doing, but the smoke shops. You know, you, you see those on every corner. There's we're talking about smoking a joint, right? No, no, no. Smoke shops, I'm talking about uh, uh, where you go in and people buy cigarettes. They buy, uh, oh, you know, they buy all those. Oh, I you know, see. The, okay, every, fine. So convenience stores. It's, it's like them. a convenience store focused on tobacco and yeah. CBD products, uh, rolling papers, all, all those kind of things. Got and you. So surprisingly, you there's, the uh, in California, there's something north of 8,000 smoke yeah. shops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, huge. They're every, they're every little strip mall has a smoke shop. Very good. So smoke shops, where else? So uh, cannabis stores, yeah, of course, uh, convenience stores. So uh, folks you know, like MedMen and those guys is an easy one. All of those, all of those, uh, as well. Seven uh, Elevens. So we have uh, we have uh, exploring a uh, an owner of about fifty Seven Elevens. 
where we can get the product in, uh, you know, do some test marketing and see how that goes uh, inside the 7-Eleven space. Um, because 7-Eleven don't mind it one little bit because it's the one compound that there's no, there's, I mean, CBD, I don't see why there would ever be any bad press, but no. just because it was associated with THC for so long and because there's so much ignorance in the market, people did associate it, right? They, they are a little conservative. 7-Eleven is a conservative uh, owned chain or a uh, franchise, uh, but, uh, you know, there, there's, there are some individual franchisees that are open to it and some that aren't, and, and it's completely fine. Um, but also understand that with this product, these products that we have- Because you're legal in every state. We're legal in every state. We can ship through the U.S. mail. How great is that? And we enhance, and, you know, uh, cannabis, uh, the THC cannabis is legal in one form or another in 37 states. We can ship to all 50 states, and people use cannabis in all 50 states. You know, so we can be selling products and building a brand name in those states before it becomes legal and get shelf space before it becomes legal. So we're, we have a, a huge advantage compared to uh, companies that are combining THC and CBD into their products. There's a lot more restrictions they face. But what we have is we have two very distinct channels. So our THC product, yeah, it, it goes to the people who smoke cannabis, who want to have that emotional feeling of high. And that's, that's wonderful. It's a huge market for that. But completely separate from that, we have two distinct labels, and we treat our CBD product completely separate from our THC product yeah. because this is a product that goes out to every single pharmacy chain in the country. This is on a shelf. All the pharmacies, Walmart, CVS, Walgreens are making CBD space on their shelves. So we have a product now that's the only one that will supercharge those. Wow. And what – It's very smart. I'm, Look, trying, I'm, I'm trying to differentiate – the two distinct markets and the, and and how we have our formulas for two different uh, two different products. So, the THC product, it, it's wonderful. It helps people uh, achieve what they want emotionally, feel good, stay high longer. It's it's a phenomenal product. It works well, and and we have wonderful reviews from it. The CBD product, people take that. There's a different emotional motivator for people taking CBD than there is for people taking THC. People take CBD to re reduce pain. To, to, to reduce arthritis or for nervousness, nervous diseases or, or, or epilepsy. There's, there's so many reasons, but it's to reduce a negative uh, uh, problem in the body. Right. So now we have a product that helps that work better. And when people are spending money on medical products, they're spending $100 on a bottle of CBD. So they can spend $30 on something that will help that work better. 100%. And especially for afflictions like you're talking about. I mean, uh, right. by the way. It goes so wide. I mean, we're, I mean, painkillers. How many people are on oh painkillers right now? It, it, you see the crisis that, it's that it is. In this. It, it's sad to see. Yeah, it's one of the biggest crises facing our time. Uh, I remember my dad had arthritis, and you're right. Like anything you have that can just b break down the pain a little bit, it's going to be a lot better. Talk to us. I, I want to move towards the, because uh, you're at such an exciting time, and I can hear it I in know. your voice, and obviously. I know you, and we're actually doing something really unique with you that we've, we've we had stopped doing elsewhere. Like we have, I mean, in the dojo, we have a number of different products. We have for the companies that are really early stage, and we will do investments into those companies because they're so early stage. The valuations are pretty low, and then sometimes we'll see a company which is later stage, but that we love, and we put it into our venture studio. And our venture studio is when we take a company into the equivalent of the accelerator, and we give them all the love, the care, the assistance, everything they could possibly want to make sure that company is successful, and. Um, but we used to do 10, 15 a year. Now, we haven't done a single one this year, not one single company this year. But this company is the first company we're going to do. And I think we're going to do it tomorrow, right? It's exciting. Yes, we have uh, within 24 hours. We'll have the agreement so, signed. Uh, we're going to do it because I, I see it. Like I see the disruption. I see the timing. Right. I see the team. Your team is rock solid. You've got an amazing finance guy. You've got an amazing partner who's on all right. of the creative and the visual guy. Like you've got it all. You got it right there. So if, when I look at all of where are the weak points in the chain, is the weak points in the chain the friction? No. Is the weak point in the chain the team? No. Is the weak point like the product isn't going to hit a proper product fit? It's like right. the, the product was made in the product fit already. We have to actually take the product out to put it back into the product. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's there. Right. They were all born together. Right. So, so, so there's nowhere else it should be except right. what you're putting it back and, into. And I can't speak highly enough of my partners. I yeah. mean, rock solid partners. I have uh, financial coming from uh, Idea Lab, 
a, a startup uh, financial specialist for many, many years. Yeah. Um, and Idea Lab, for those of you who don't know, is a legend in the LA market. Bill Gross ran that place, and it was known as the incubation center for startups that were successful out of LA. And this is 20 years ago before right. we had anything. Right. My marketing, uh, my marketing partner, uh, uh, big in the entertainment marketing world, uh, friends with uh, you know everyone from the Marleys to uh, Jack Johnson to all these people. Um, he also wrote the first uh, <clears throat> the first uh, continuing medical education course for doctors on medical cannabis use and taught it through San Francisco State University. Wow, that's crazy! Right. But it's a great team. I know them both really well, and it's a fantastic team you have. And um, so we are going to move very shortly to the. We know the product, we know the market. I want to talk a little bit more about distribution and going beyond the smoke shops and see where it goes. And then we're going to talk about like what you're raising and what that raise is going to be spent on. And we're going to look at like how much revenue can come in right. per cycle you have. But before we get there, let's just rewind back to the start when you were just building this. And especially, I want to look at some of the more difficult moments of building up a business so mm -hmm. that people listening can really get a feel for how hard this really is. Because I think sometimes you listen to a podcast like this, you go like, this is great. Why don't we do that tomorrow? Yeah. I was like, dude, because it's it so, so freaking easy. hard. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard. I mean, there's, there's just not words. They haven't invented words in the English language for the emotions that you go through. Uh, and then I, and I, want, true. So I want to look at that and I want to look at some of maybe some of without mentioning names maybe some of the the advice or the people the stuff that kind of held you back a little bit and then I want to start looking at kind of how we then got the machine moving to where it is now right well you know it's funny I was sitting out on your beautiful balcony overlooking the promenade here and uh, and uh, you know thinking back it was uh, almost three years ago that I was sitting on that balcony and I was kind of reminiscing a little bit you it's know crazy. about kind of where we've come and uh, and how things have developed and how they've developed differently than what uh, what I anticipated. You know, when uh, I, I was uh, executive vice president of an entertainment company working with uh, touring artists and, uh, you know, I left that company and, um, you know, I had uh, started this and, uh, you know, I took a severance package and I'm thinking, okay, I've got this little bit of time. I'm going to make this product and I, you know, I'm going to... It's still so brave though. It's so brave because... You have a, it's a big job. It was like, we're not stupid. talking fifteen bucks an hour here. <laughs> we're talking a huge job with a huge salary where you're pretty much guaranteed corner to office stay sunset on that boulevard, you know, and not you yeah, know, like up and up. The and, gravy uh, train is yours. Well, yeah, it, you know, entertainment's a wonderful business to be in, especially in Hollywood. And, you know, when you get your foot in, you're working with the major agencies, it's a fun job to do as well. But you know, I became a single dad when my girl turned two, and you know, I just uh, I had to get off the road. I had to, uh, you know, it makes you focus extremely fast. You know, so you know, I tried staying in the business a while, but you know, running to you know preschool in the morning and picking up in the afternoon when you used to be the first one in and last one out, and taking flights and all that, and you know, change things. And you know, I the most wonderful company I worked with before, and I finally had to go into the president and say, you know, look, it's been a wonderful seven years, but you know, I you know, I'm not doing this company a benefit right now because of you know, I need to make a change. So, you know, we parted ways and, and, and the, in the best of terms. Um, you but know, you knew about this at that stage, did you? You were ready? No. Oh, my God. No. I, you know, oh it, was, uh, it was, you know, oh, dude. it was an absolute curveball thrown in, in life, you know, and uh, I, I needed to step out. I needed to, uh, you know, kind of figure out, you know, how am I going to do this, you know? I'd, I'd go raise this little baby on my own, you know? So, wow. so I took a severance package and, uh, <clears throat> you know, it's funny, I, you know, I, I dropped her off. I remember that, that, that Monday I dropped her off at her preschool. And, and I remember I go to, uh, Beverly drive and I sit down and, you know, I'm having a coffee and I'm sitting there and it's kind of like, what am I going to do now? <laughs> you know, <laughs> I have no idea what to do. Yeah. And it was the strangest thing because this, this memory came of a conversation I had with one of my best friends for 20 years who formulated nutritional supplements. And we had a conversation uh, about, uh, we were talking about cannabis in, in California somehow. And he talked about, you know, how he could, you know, make uh, cannabis oils and extract it real strongly. And I was like, oh. and I don't know why this conversation popped back in my head, but it did. And then I, I started thinking, you know, and, and the pieces just came together. He was talking about extracting cannabis oils and how he could make something strong. But I remembered him as a, a brilliant formulator of nutritional supplements. And then I saw the two. I said, well, wait a minute. What if there's nutritional supplements that can be made to enhance the effects of cannabis? Wow. And so this light bulb went off and I said, that's something I could do. That's something I would enjoy doing. And that's a product that hasn't been done that can really make a, make a move and that would be fun to do. And it, it kind of got my juices going. 
So I called up a, a, a marketing person I used to work with in entertainment, uh, Luke Archer, brilliant marketing, uh, and uh, and drove up there. And uh, you know I saw him as a marketing partner for this. So I drove up to Santa Barbara, and uh, we went out to lunch. And you know I kind of kind of threw this thing out at him, and it was a, the funniest thing. He sits back in his chair at lunch. He puts down his fork and he says, "You know, Bradley, I don't know if you know this about me." And he goes, "He goes, you know, you came to me for marketing, but." Uh, I actually wrote the first continuing medical education course for medical cannabis, and I taught that. And I'm actually very big on the endocannabinoid system. <laughs> I had no idea about any of this. And so we both kind of go, okay. This like the inner uh, kind of well, what? Yeah, exactly, exactly. I go, yeah, okay, we're partners. <laughs> so uh, uh, And so we called it Providence. You know, things just fell into place. And the same thing with a yeah. financial partner. Um, you know, uh, uh, just things have fallen into place. So, you know, get the um, – we start um, – looking around and, uh, you know, this had never been done before. And so I started looking around on, uh, on online forums. I look at nutritionists, I look, uh, through Reddit and I'm looking for, you know, nutritionists and people that are talking about cannabis and things that they take with cannabis. And I start to see some commonality from nutritionists that are talking about certain herbs that they were taking that, that they said they wow. like taking when they take cannabis. So I started making a short list. And so that's how eventually we got to a first formula. Luke takes a look at this and, you know, we start looking around the industry and he says, you know what? These herbs are very high in terpenes. Terpenes are an oil in the plant. And so that became very interesting. So then we start to see that terpenes is a new wave inside of the uh, cannabis world. You know, I, I then, you know, left and, you know, as it starts to take longer and longer on time to do this, I jump on board, become managing director of a, of a cannabis distribution and manufacturing company. Because you're figure, studying your trade. Yeah, I'm studying my trade. I'm getting, you know, I figure, look, if, if this is going to be a cannabis product, I need to really understand the cannabis business. And one thing I learned is I don't want to be in the cannabis business. It's a highly regulated, highly taxed, very, very difficult on the supply side for, for the yeah. cannabis market. It is now. It, like, but look, the choices are good. If it had been 10 years ago, you would have had to get some <laughs> tattoos on your neck. It, tattoos and, uh, you know, yeah, travel <laughs> with an entourage. Some knuckle dusters, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but honestly, the supply side is still like that. You know, I would have to go on buys for supplies. And, uh, you know, you've got six people with guns around you. And there's a lot of cash. And there's, there's, there's you know, marijuana on the table. And, yeah, it's licensed to license legal. But it's, uh, you know, ex-military guarding this stuff, yeah. you know, and there's some, uh, you know, then over here, you've got Damn. these gangbangers over here that just happen to get in the business. It's a crazy side of the business on the supply side. Believe me, I'm very happy to be in the nutritional supplement category. Yeah. You yeah, know, yeah, we yeah. get our herbs, you know. Uh, so uh, all of this was a learning world. process for you that then took you to a place. Were you ever worried? Did you ever have a moment as you were building this where you thought, oh, my God, I'm not sure I can do it. And it's not – I don't believe you ever had a moment where you didn't believe the product was going to be incredible. I don't Absolutely. I actually right, – I don't right. believe that for a second, right? Um, but was there ever a moment when, when either self-doubt came in that you would be able to do it or that it might take too long or you would require additional experience? You know, you started out – very correctly. You can't put into words the emotions and the experiences that you go through as an entrepreneur when you're launching something like this. You know, I was listening to this wonderful gentleman out here in your, you know, in your lecture series here before I came in, uh, you know, talking about, you know, hey, by the time I was 24, I, you know, bought and sold four companies and all this. You know, that's not me. Yeah. You know, I, I was running an entertainment company. I had teams working for me kind of more in the corporate world. And this is my first baby. Yeah. And by you the know? way, you are like me, like everyone. I mean, that's Ron Miller. Ron Miller is chairman of Start Engine. Brilliant, brilliant guy. And a legendary entrepreneur in Santa Monica. Right. But they, they, you know, it's not that they don't make many of him. It's just that you need to be programmed from the very beginning to do it. Most people are programmed like us. And, and genuinely, I, in some levels, it's almost harder because you get to a stage in life where you have to break every single thing that you've been on. Like the bridge on this That's side to has to be cut. Right. And you've never been on the bridge on the other side. No. So you have to start walking across, not knowing what's ahead of you, which I think is a lot more scary. It, it, it's uh, it's unknown territory for sure, you know. And and the most reassuring thing I've had is 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 very good partners that are very good in what they do. And I know those areas for me are big weaknesses. Yeah. And I know my strength. You know, it's something I've I've been very fortunate to be very clear about myself on. Yeah, it's brilliant. You're a hundred percent right. Yeah. So, talk to me about distribution. So now you're going to be. So we know the smoke shops, and we know you can go in there. And um, the amount of money, I mean, you can do. I know a hundred thousand dollars probably for a run, and that would get you well, what, look, five six hundred thousand. Uh, yeah, about six hundred fifty-seven thousand based off a hundred thousand production runs. So great uh, margins. Yeah, you know, you know, we, we roll that over into more production, into more marketing, you know, and, and uh, you know, all, all those wonderful things. Um, but on the distribution side. Um, you think you it's know, going to be much digital? 
Oh, absolutely. Straight oh, this to is consumer? a direct to consumer in a big way, and the margins of that are phenomenal, phenomenal. And that 657000 is actually half based off online sales direct. And I know Luke's doing some awesome videos, which he's putting together. Right. And some good, some good, right. funny. Like, well, he's, he's great at the experiential videos. He doesn't just shoot a video saying, hey, you should take this. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. No, we have an amazing creative. Uh, and we really enjoy our creative uh, uh, ideas. And uh, he's, he, he's brilliant. That's why I went to him first, because I'd worked with him. You know, on a marketing and video production capacity, we did a series and for artists on tour, and his ideas were great. His his production work was amazing, and the team he works with in Santa Barbara is top notch. So it sounds like the only thing you need is investment. The what we need is uh, right now we're looking for a convertible note of a hundred thousand, uh, which. Uh, but why don't you need more? That's what I don't understand. Like, why don't you need more? You must need more. Well, you know, a hundred thousand, a uh, hundred thousand uh, uh, factoring, a uh, hundred thousand purchase order financing uh, will get us enough money to roll into another round of production. And what we like to offer is the uh, is a, is a first right for investment. We're going to need big money. We're going to need. This is going to reach a stage where you know we have we have a big brand play. Like you're talking about Red Bull, Five Hour Energy. We are the Five Hour Energy of the cannabis market. We're the Five Hour Energy of the CBD market. You know, we we know that we're we're an every shop. We're easy to put in every shop. Um, we're we're going to get to the point where with all of the uh, uh, um, celebrity power that we have to reach out to, that we're going to need to bring them on board and make well, a big Why not big go play. straight for 500? For, for, it's As an option. Race. It's the option if, if, if the, you know, we're happy to have that conversation with, uh, you know, with, uh, so with don't the get right me people. Wrong. I'm, listen, there's nothing I like more than somebody sitting in here and saying, I want to get the money so that we can get the sales and the sales is going to get more money, stupid. Like, that's what I love. That's the way entrepreneurship should be. Right. However, when you have a product which is as strong as yours and can scale as fast and it's just a question of numbers, there is a temptation to say, well, you know, if we can get like 600 with 100, well, dang, if we got 500, we can throw 350 of that at marketing and we can come straight in at 1.95 million. And we would be happy to have that conversation with the right people. You know, so you want, you want to get very strategic. You've been very strategic right, at the, from, right from the beginning. So you're keeping that strategic play and making sure that you're just getting the people in who can actually help you with distribution, not just give you money that you throw into digital media. With the right people, we'd be happy to form a nice relationship. I love it. And then so speaking to investors who are listening right now, where do you see this going in the future? <clears throat> in what way? They invest money in. They throw in 100 Two hundred, whatever it is, um, what's going to happen to what's going to happen to the company? Well, our <clears throat> our first play is getting uh, getting our maybe fast. We're going to fast. We're going to do like a year or two years or three years. And I don't mean projections necessarily. I just mean like, what do you see in your mind? Where do you see the company go? And you can describe it any way you want. You so can we, describe it from like <clears throat> pre-seed, seed, Series A. You can just divide it on, on how much you raise or like revenue. You think I want to be able to paint a picture. A little bit like my, my wife said to me in the other days, where are we going to live when we're a little bit older? <laughs> well, <laughs> there's going to be a nice house and it's going to have a red roof and we're going to have like four bedrooms or maybe two now because <laughs> I'm in the early stage space. Right, uh, she's going to hold me to that. <laughs> Paint that picture for our investors. Well, the nice thing for me is that, um, that I have such a solid financial partner in the business that that's, uh, that's really a conversation uh, that he would be driving. Yeah. Um, where I see us being uh, is developing a very strong direct cons- direct to consumer online presence. Uh, we have uh, celebrities. We have a, a champion boxer right now that's on stage for a uh, to endorse our CBD product. We have a champion bodybuilder on stage to be- endorse our CBD product. We're um, going to Vegas. We're going to Vegas, baby. <laughs> we're going to Vegas. Um, um, you know, we have uh, uh, on the music side. Uh, you know, I really don't want to name names, but in the reggae world, we have some very strong, yeah. very strong yeah, artists yeah, to jump on board. And again, these are two very distinct products that we're marketing in very uh, different ways. They come from the similar formulas. We augment different uh, plants, different terpene oils that combine better with uh, CBD for our for our um, Amplify product for the CBD enhancer. For the THC enhancer, we have you know a different set of terpenes that that boost that. We also have different celebrities for each product. And we have different marketing channels for each product. Both of them will be very strong direct to consumer online. So that's uh, that's a big play for us. A recurring monthly club. You know, everybody likes to talk Dollar Shave Club, blah blah blah. You know, huge success out of out of this area. Um, 
we love the direct-to-consumer model, monthly club, uh, and all, all the things we can do with that, especially with the, the faces and names we can get on the product. Um, you know what I love? And I, I, by the way, so I ask the question in a slightly leading way because I already know that you intend to be the number one brand in this space. We're creating the category. Right. That's all. Exactly. And, yeah. then, and then when you own the category, the same as Bird or Uber, or Amazon right. or everyone else, it our Red Bull or Five, right. like it's yours. Right. And then I also know that you don't believe that there's a single dispensary, smoke shop, our person anywhere that takes either CBD or will take CBD or THC that should not have you in the cupboard beside it. Exactly. Right? So it is it is absolute domination. And that's why it's such an exciting journey. And it's also why, like, I'm a little bit stupid, but I'm not that stupid. Even I can see this coming, which is the reason why, like, you're the only company in nine months of this year or eight and a half months of this year that we've taken into the venture studio because we're very I believe happy to be here with you. so sure that you're going to go through. And look, whether you end up going public on the Canadian Securities Exchange, who I know loved you when I introduced you to them Absolutely. before, whether you end up you know, getting into a place of being acquired, whether you end up acquiring someone else or whether you end up just growing with massive sales. Um, there, there's a new term that's just come out now, which is a unicorn that doesn't lose money. Right, it's a unicorn that actually goes through, doesn't require rounds of investment. It just gets profit. Like, and it, so it's it's a unique vehicle. Actually, unicorns are easy to find. It's easy to find a company that loses money every damn day. Like, we works. They're everywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, you can lose lots of money. Cost you four billion dollars. So you made a million dollars in billion dollars in revenue. Well done. Hey, everybody knows your name. God, God, God bless you. Right? <laughs> I wish I could get somebody to give me model, money for that model. But actually, building a business that can have really strong profitability is really huge. So well, that's a nice thing about the nutritional supplement category, which is where we live. We're cleared by the FDA under yeah. the grass, generally recognized as safe. We can we can sell this product in any Whole Foods. We can sell it in any Walgreens. Uh, we can ship it anywhere. Uh, it's safe to use. Uh, we're in a very sweet category, and the nutritional supplement industry is far larger than the CBD market, which is where we, we sit safely in the nutritional supplement category. We're not a cannabis product. We're not regulated by the cannabis industry. We're not taxed by the cannabis industry. Um, the nutritional supplement industry, it's, it's a very well established many solid, reputable manufacturers, and we have a very good manufacturer. Uh, the distribution channels are set up, the online marketing channels are set up, you know, it's it's a straight play. It's not complicated, we don't have to figure that part out, we just need to play the game. Yeah, beautiful. So, I don't see, I just, <laughs> I'm just looking forward to this, it's gonna be good. We'll bring in the investment soon, we'll get the sales going soon, and then 2020 is going to be your year. And I want to finish it off by, A, making sure that everybody's got your contact details, especially investors. So just your email address, uh, website, so people can contact you on the website. Right. And then again, just repeat the name so everybody knows that. So the the uh, corporate name, uh, which owns the products and the uh, the OEM rights, are uh, it's terpeneenhanced.com, T-E-R-P-E-N-E-E-N-H-A-N-C-E-D.com. And the emails you can send to Bradley, B-R-A-D-L-E-Y, at terpeneenhanced.com. Uh, you can reach sales at terpeneenhanced.com. Uh, you can check out our Enhighten uh, website, E-N-H-I-G-H-T-E-N.com. Our Amplify site's rolling up shortly. So. Beautiful. Man, it's a pleasure. I'm looking forward to everything that it brings. It's going to be a hell of a ride next year. We are so excited. <laughs> it's, it's really fun. <laughs> That's a wrap. Wonderful. Thanks for joining us. If you love the podcast, please empower your circle by sharing these stories. The Art of Startup War is brought to you by Expert Dojo. And remember, we invest in startups, $50,000 checks. Make sure you apply on our site if you are one of those great entrepreneurs looking to bring your company to the next level. As far as the Art of Startup War is concerned, we are back every single Tuesday at 10 a.m. So remember... Check out the new episodes. If you want to find out what the investors think, check out season one or two. But make sure you join us every single week.